All right, in this lesson, we're going to kind of expand in the last lesson with uh, what do we do in subsequent years um, and, and talk about what happens in subsequent years, especially to the investment in company B or investment in investees account on the parent company's books. And so we're really only going to look at one entry, and that's consolidation entry S. And the reason why is consolidation entries a, I, and D for the most part stays the same year after year. There is one difference with consolidation entry A, um, but your book shares to you that one. Uh, it basically comes down to, you know, when we first, if they, if they had a book value of $100,000 for an equipment and fair value on the date of acquisition was 160, we would have 160 when we consolidate. And then if we're depreciating or amortizing that additional $60,000 over um, 10 years, we would take an additional depreciation expense of 6,000. And so what we theoretically do in that case is uh, the following year, we would have taken 6,000 the previous year. So when we consolidate them over, we consolidate 100,000 plus the 60, but we subtract 6,000 because we took $6,000 of amortization expense in the prior year. And so when we consolidate them over, our assets are actually 154,000 instead of 160. You might, reason, might ask, you know, well, why is that? Uh, really that has to do with this idea of amortization because the rule for amortization is, is we can book amortization as a debit amortization expense credit accumulated amortization or we can credit uh, the actual uh, intangible, in this case equipment. So when we consolidate them over, it's 154,000 instead of 160 because intangibles, we can book the offsetting depreciation expense or amortization expense to the actual asset. So um, in your book, it talks a little bit about consolidation entry A and how A uh, in the first year would have been 160, but then in the next year it'd be 160 minus six, and then in the second year it'd be 160 minus 12, which would get you 148. So in that second year, when you consolidate them over, it'd be $148,000 for the equipment rather than the original 160. I know that kind of doesn't make sense because we're not supposed to reduce the equipment value uh, we just book accumulated depreciation, but that's the only difference, and that's why uh, that's uh, that's kind of why they do it. So, uh, but otherwise, consolidation I, D, and E stay the same, and so we're not really going to focus on A, A, I, D, and E. We're just going to look at consolidation S and how that works subsequent year. So let's start our discussion with this idea of what happens to investment in Company B. So remember that the investment in company B is on the parent's book. So when I first acquire company B, I book debit investment in company B or investment in investee and credit cash, okay? Well, let's assume that I buy company B for $200,000. So I buy company B at $200,000. So debit investment in company B, $200,000, credit cash for $200,000. Now remember, we're using consolidations, but we're using the equity method of consolidation. So the equity method says is that we increase the investment in the investee or the investment in company a, a B's account when they have income. We decrease it when we receive dividends. So uh, if they have income for this next year of let's say $10,000, we would increase our investment in company B's account by $10,000. Um, by debiting investment in company B for 10,000, crediting equity in company B for 10,000, okay? And so we, our investment in company B goes up by $10,000. We decrease it by dividends, so uh, in this case, it would be debit dividends receivable for 3,000, credit investment in investee for 3,000, or investment in company B, for 3000 and so our ending balance and in investment in, in company B at the end of year one is 207. Now, we talked about this before. In that first year, all we would do is we would reverse this here, consolidation entry S. We would reverse it by debiting common stock, debiting additional paid in capital, and these are all B entry, uh, 
B company's company stock, B's trial balance, additional paid in capital, and B's retained earnings on their books for 70,000 and credit investment in company B. That gets rid of 200,000. Now we're missing seven, okay? So that got rid of 200,000 with seven. Remember we talked about consolidation entry I. I would have reversed this 10,000. Consolidation entry D would reverse this 3,000, okay? Well, let's assume that time goes on and we have year two, $12,000 of income, so that bumps that to 219. Dividend, that would bump that to 214, okay? Um, so what happens is at the end of year two, when we do consolidation entry I, we don't add up 10 plus 12. So we don't do consolidation I of $22,000. We do consolidation I on 12,000, which means we're gonna have an issue because we're gonna remove that, we're gonna move that with I, we're gonna move this with D, but we haven't removed that, okay? And if we looked at this purely, we would have Remove that 200,000, we would have removed that with consolidation entry I, we would have removed that with consolidation entry D, but these are left, which means we still have a $7,000 difference, okay? Keep on going, year three, they make 15,000, so I'm gonna increase my investment in company B by 229, and I'm gonna decrease it by five because I receive 5,000. So 224,000 is my investment in company B's balance, but again, the problem is, is if I do consolidation entry I, it only removes this 15,000, it doesn't remove that one or that one, and if I do consolidation entry D, it removes that, but it doesn't remove that and that. So at the end of the day, we now have, it looks like $4,000, seven, sorry. Just making sure my math's right. So 217 plus 12 is 219. Minus five is two four. Okay, so what we have is we have a difference of two hundred thousand and two fourteen. That would be eliminated, and so now we have fourteen thousand dollars of unknown. Like we haven't really, if we add these up, you get fourteen thousand. We haven't really eliminated those, so we would still have an investment in company B for fourteen thousand dollars. And so this is what our discussion is leading to. At the end of um, year four, okay, we have. Income of 18,000, dividends of 6,000. So we have a new investment in company B account of $236,000. And remember, consolidation entry I would remove that. Consolidation entry D would remove that. The problem is, is now these two haven't been removed. So all of this hasn't been removed. And so the only one thing that I want you to understand when it comes to consolidation S, okay, when it comes to consolidation S, and when we're consolidating, let's say it's four years down the line, is this. Notice the change here. The common stock is gonna be the same. The additional paid in capital is gonna be the same. However, the retained earnings would have increased on their books, companies B's books would have increased from 70,000 to 104. How did it get to 104? It got to 104 because they added to the retained earnings 10,000, but then they subtracted 3,000 for dividends paid. Then the next year, they would have increased it by 12,000, but then they would have decreased it by 5,000, and then they would have increased it by 15, and then decreased it by 5,000. Now, I haven't done the math, but if you did that to this retained earnings balance, it would get to 104. So notice, in subsequent years, this is gonna change. So when we make, the, in, in year four, when we make the consolidation entry at S, we are going to debit common stock for 100,000, we're gonna debit additional paid in capital of 30,000, and we're gonna debit retained earnings, not for the original 70,000, but now for 104, okay? And that will give me a credit investment comp B for 224. Does that match the number? That matches that number. Okay, so now I basically consolidated that balance. All of these balances are now zeros. And then I will take care of that and D will take care of that. Okay, and so really at the end of the year, we're basically gonna take our differences here. We're gonna debit retained earnings and credit investment in comp B for a new higher amount than we did in year one. Now you might say, but I already made this entry, so isn't it stuck? Uh, these entries don't stick around. They're temporary entries. So 
the next year we're going to have to redo that entry because I can already see in your head, well, couldn't we have just done kept this in our books and debited retained earnings for 34000 difference between those two, and then uh, credit investment in company B for 34000 uh, yeah, you could have done it that way, uh, but that's not how, or 24,000, sorry, uh, but that's not exactly how we uh, teach it, so um, that's kind of where we are. Sorry, this number's wrong, 234. Okay, so these are temporary, they don't, uh, they don't carry from year to year, so the only difference from consolidation S in subsequent years is we increase retained earnings and it increase the investment in comp B, everything else stays the same. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about consolidation entry, I think, P.